हे वॉट्स गोइंग ऑन गाइस तन मई ईयर फॉर सिंपल स्निपेट्स एंड वेलकम बैक टू अनदर वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल ऑन बुलियन एलजेब्रा एंड लॉजिक गिट्स इन दिस वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल वी गोन अंडरस्टैंड इन डिटेल द वर्किंग ऑफ अ हाफ सब्ट्रैक्टर कॉम्बिनेशनल सर्किट नाइम अज्यूमिंग यू ऑलरेडी नो सम बेसिक्स ऑफ बुलियन एलजेब्रा एस्पेशली द फंडामेंटल लॉजिक गेट्स एंड सम ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट बुलियन एलजेब्राइक ऑपरेशन इफ यू डोंट नो दम प्लीज चेक आउट दिस होल बुलियन एलजेब्रा प्ले लिस्ट वी हैव अ लॉड ऑफ ट्यूटोरियल्स ऑलरेडी एक्जिस्टिंग वीव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड हाफ एडर फुल एडर एज वेल In this video, as I mentioned, we are going to study half subtractor in detail. Most importantly, we want to draw the circuit diagram and understand what all logical operations it carries out and what all logic gates are involved. Okay. So to do that, we will understand each use case, each operation. And as you can see, I have a blank truth table over here. So we will evaluate the input and output. We will understand everything in detail. But let's first take a little bit of theory first, and then we will proceed with the actual circuit diagram. so half subtractor just like half adder is a combinational circuit combinational circuit is basically a circuit which combines multiple logic gates to achieve a certain output for a certain input okay so it's a combinational circuit that obviously as its name suggests subtracts two binary bits okay so it has two inputs a and b and it has two outputs now in half adder's case we had the sum and carry in half subtractor since we are doing subtraction we will obviously have the difference and we also have a borrow variable over here it is denoted as b out or b0 now we'll understand what all this is when we see the different different combinations in the truth table but over here if you see we have a block diagram of how a half subtractor would look like we have the inputs a and b so this is inputs and on the right hand side we have the output d and b0 okay now of course this is the block diagram or you could say this is the ic level diagram but what is important is the main circuit diagram because the circuit diagram reveals what exactly is happening inside this block diagram or what are the different logical gates used and how they are connected to give us these specific outputs right so now let's actually understand the truth table for this specific half subtractor and since there are only two inputs we know that the possible number of combinations is 4 so i'll just write 0 0 1 1 0 1 0 so these are obviously the possible combinations of the inputs and depending upon the subtraction operation we will get the appropriate outputs so let's quickly understand how boolean subtraction would work like okay let's say we have two boolean numbers 1 0 minus 0 1 so this is the subtraction that we want to do okay so when you want to subtract 1 from 0 this is where we have a borrow condition because obviously 0 is smaller than 1 right so it takes a borrow from its neighboring digit so we have 1 over here so this 1 is borrowed and this makes this number as 2 it sounds weird it looks weird but you have to memorize this this is how subtraction works when 1 is borrowed to its adjacent digit to the right because it is obviously smaller than the number that we want to subtract it becomes 2 okay so 2 minus 1 will give you 1 it doesn't become 1 if it becomes 1 then 1 minus 1 will become 0 so keep this in mind this is the one anomaly that you have to memorize and that is whenever there is a borrow the neighboring digit becomes 2 that is the actual value of it is 2 although in binary number system we only have 0 and 1 it is 2 is not something that you will visibly see we are only dabbling with 0 and 1 but its actual value is 2 because it is carried from a digit which is besides it which has a higher positional value so positional weights of this one is 2 raised to 0 for the positional weight of this one is 2 raised to 1 right so this one has a higher value compared to the digit towards its right so just keep this in mind so when you carry forward this number this becomes 2 and then you have to do a 2 minus 1 where you'll get the output as 1 okay so just keep this in mind so when one is carried forward and given to this this becomes 2 we have 2 minus 1 which gives us 1 but this variable now becomes 0 okay this digit becomes 0 now 0 minus 0 is going to be 0 so this will be the result of the subtraction so if you were to convert these two numbers that is 10 and 01 from binary version to its decimal version so those will be converted into 2 into decimal version so these are binary numbers and you when you convert them into their corresponding decimal numbers they will be converted into 1 in decimal so 2 minus 1 will also give you 1 in decimal and if you convert this 0 1 which is in binary into decimal that will also become 1 so we've performed the proper subtraction as well so this is one unique case that i wanted to explain in subtraction 
other cases could be like 1 minus 1 in binary would give you 0, 0 minus 0 will give you 0, 1 minus 0 will give you 1. So these are the differences, okay? And you will not get a borrow in any of these cases. We are not borrowing anything. So borrow will be 0 at, in all times. However, when you do 0 minus 1, remember the output is going to be 1 because you take a carry. So you take an imaginary carry over here and this 0 becomes 2. So 2 minus 1 will give you 1. But this time you have a borrow which becomes 1. Okay. Now since you have understood this basic operation coming back to our truth table, we can easily fill out the truth table. We also have four different combinations. You have the difference which will be A minus B. So 0 minus 0 will give you 0. 0 minus 1, remember A is smaller, B is greater. And when you are doing this subtraction, so you have to take an imaginary borrow over here. So this 0 becomes 2 and 2 minus 1 will give you a difference of 1. And at the same time, the borrow will also become 1. Over here, the borrow is 0. So 1 minus 0, difference is 1, borrow is 0. We don't take any borrow. 1 minus 1, difference is 0, borrow is also 0. So this, my friends, is the whole truth table. And this basically is all the different possible combinations when you're doing the subtraction of A minus B, okay, using the half subtractor. So this is the truth table. Now what we want to do is taking this truth table and we want to draw a circuit diagram which will always give these two outputs D and B0 when you supply these two inputs. So let's proceed in drawing this circuit diagram. So we have the inputs A and B. These could be the input lines. Okay. Now just by observing the input and output for this D difference variable, you can see that it is always one when one of the variable A and B is high, high or one. Okay. When both of them are zero, the D is zero. When A is zero and B is one, D is one. When A is one and B is zero, D is one. But when both of the A and B is one, D is zero. Now this is exactly what a XOR logic gate does. A XOR logic gate's output is always high when odd number of inputs are high. So this is what we've studied in XOR gate, right? So let's draw XOR gate. So our XOR gate D output is given by A XOR B and let's make the connections over here. So A and B are fed in as input. I'll write A and B over here. So A and B are fed in as inputs to the XOR gate. So this is nothing but a XOR gate which performs A XOR B. So the output of this gate will always be high when odd number of inputs are high. So odd number of inputs are high in case number two and three. This is case number one. This is case number four. In case number two, odd number of inputs are high, which means we have only one input high, which is B. In case number three, we have A as high. So odd number of inputs. In case number four, we have even number of inputs which are high, right? Both A and B are high, which means two inputs are high. Two is obviously an even number. Hence the output of D is low. Okay. So this is easily derived, right? Now let's see the output for B0. How do you get B0? Now, if you observe B0 is only one or only high in the case number two, in every other case, B0 is always zero. So how do you get this case to be one? Okay. We have A as zero and B as one. So let me write A over here and let's write B over here. And we want B0, which is supposed to be one, right? We want it to be one. So if we take B, as 1, which is what we have in this case, a is 0 equal to 1. So what operation between these two variables will give you 1? If you take a multiplication, so a and b would be 0 and 1. So 0 and 1 will obviously become 0. So it will not be equal to 1. So if we take a complement over here, we can convert a, which is 0, and we can make it 1, right? So I can make this 1. And now when I take a multiplication, it will give me 1. So the output of B0 is given by A complement B and there is an AND in between which means that there is a multiplication in between which means that we need an AND gate. So to take the complement remember we need a NOT gate. So let's first derive that. So from A we take a separate line out and we draw a NOT gate over here. So NOT gate looks something like this and the output of NOT gate will always be A complement, right? Now we take this output and we take B as it is and now we draw a AND gate. Now the output of AND gate over here, which is going to be B0 is going to be 
you could see this is a complement which we are supplying as one input and b we are supplying as it is so the output here is going to be a complement and b all right guys so this is the whole circuit diagram of half subtractor and just to verify all this let's input all these values okay so let's take the first use case 0 and 0 when a and b is 0 and 0 a complement will become 1 obviously yes this is basic so when a is 0 b is 0 when you are doing a xor of 0 and 0 the output will obviously be a xor b which is 0 so this is correct what happens to b 0 so a becomes 1 over here so 1 is supplied and b remains 0 only so 1 dot 0 that is 1 and 0 will obviously be 0 so you can see this is the output okay so this was the case number 1 let's try case number 2 case number 2 we have a as 0 and b as 1 so a complement becomes 1 so this becomes 1 okay so 0 and 1 0 x or 1 will give us 1 we've got 1 over here in the truth table similarly a complement is 1 what is b b is also 1 1 and 1 is also going to be 1 so you can see in our truth table we've got that same value now in the same way if you check for case number 3 and 4 you'll get the same results what we have over here as output and this will prove this whole truth table and this circuit diagram and this is the whole circuit diagram for half subtractor all right so this was the whole video of half subtractor i hope you understood the theory you understood this block diagram you understood the truth table and also the subtraction calculation and most importantly the circuit diagram you can be asked in exams to draw this circuit diagram and you'll be given some inputs and you'll have to find out the output all right guys this was the whole video for half subtractor if you like this video please give it a like let me know in the comments how this video was do share it with your friends and i'll see you guys in the next one peace Thank you.